Hi, my name is John Perry. I'm a technical project manager with IPC. I'm here to answer a technical question that we frequently get with an IPC, and that is, how, what is the definition of a thermal zone that's used for evaluating holes in microsections and printed circuit boards? And traditionally, in the IPC 6010 series, when we talk about plated holes in boards, we're frequently talking about a thermal zone around the plated hole structure. A thermal zone is a zone by which um, evaluations for things like laminate voids and laminate cracks are excluded in a microsection evaluation. And traditionally, the thermal zone has been a, uh, an area that extends about 80 microns, or roughly 3 thousandths of an inch from the edge of either the external or internal land that extends furthest away from the hole. So as an example, in this plated through hole, a thermal zone where you have about a distance here of about three thousandths and a distance here about three thousandths, this is your thermal zone right here. So this whole area is excluded from requirements for laminate voids or cracks that you would normally find outside of the thermal zone. This is what we've had in the 6010 series for many years, and it's based on concepts that were initiated in the 1980s and 1990s, and were pretty good when most of the boards were using plated through hole structures. The question becomes, in today's technology, how do you apply the concept of thermal zones when you have buried or blind vias where you don't have a, a, a via structure going all the way through the board? So this concept that we've had no longer works for those type, types of via structures. So let's say, for example, you have let's say you have a blind via here in your board, and you have another blind via on the opposite side of the board. Traditionally, we've drawn a thermal zone that just goes straight down through the board. But what happens if you have laminate voids in the middle? In our old interpretation, the thermal zone would have been straight through here. And even though this laminate void is not within the hole structures, the question is, do you evaluate that for 6012? And what we've, what we've done in, in 6012 and also 6013 and 6018 is we've expanded the concept of a thermal zone to be a perimeter. So let's say you have some internal lands in addition to your external. We're still using the same distance requirement, 80 microns or 3 thousandths of an inch. But instead of going straight through the board, your thermal zone is a perimeter. It's a perimeter of 80 microns around the board. So it's 80 microns from the edge of the uh, external or internal land that extends furthest in the laminate, as well as a vertical dimension of 80 microns extending away from uh, one of the buried pads. By using this concept, this laminate void is no longer considered um, part of the thermal zone and can be evaluated for acceptance criteria within 6012. Another example of this is if you have a another buried, or I'm sorry, a blind via structure. Wow, that's a really bad path. Somebody needs to work on their plating operation. And let's say you have a, a blind via structure, but then over here, you have a staggered microvia. And what we found is most people in the industry don't like the concept of stacking microvias right on top of, a, of another structure. So what we have here is a staggered structure. So how then does this concept, does this perimeter concept here for thermal zones apply here? Well, we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to draw a line about three thousandths of an inch from the uh, 
from the edge of the land that's extending furthest into the laminate. But then I'm going to have this the same concept here, where I'm going out 3 thousandths or 80 micron from the edge of this pad. And so what happens is I get a staggered thermal zone structure. So now, with a staggered microvia structure, I also have a staggered or overlap concept for the thermal zones. So any laminate voids or laminate cracks within this perimeter would be excluded from the acceptance criteria in 6012 and 6013 and 6018. Uh, this is a concept that's going to appear first in the Rev B of 6018, which we're planning to publish in the, uh, uh, in the summertime or early fall of, of 2011, and it's going to be followed up with revisions or amendments to 6012 for rigid and 6013 for flex. If you have any other questions about the concept of thermal zones in the 6010 series uh, performance documents, you can always send an email to answers at ipc.org and they'll be routed to either myself or other members of the IPC tech staff to answer.